Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Purpose of this quick intro is to be introducing and telling you about this video and also telling you about the fact that as part of this video, we're gonna be doing the 5,000 subscriber giveaway. 5,000 is a number that I wasn't sure I was ever gonna be able to achieve, but thanks to you folks, I have, and it's growing on top of that. So I really do appreciate all your subscriptions, your likes, your shares, your views, comments, things like that. Helps me enormous, enormously. You guys have bailed me out on a couple of things in the comments. I have mentioned that before. I want you to keep them coming because they really do help me out a lot. So again, thanks so much for 5,000 subscribers. Here's to another 5K. When we get to 10, we'll do another one. So again, this video, I'm gonna talk about about how we're gonna do the giveaway. Let me tell you about the video first. This video is about the restoration of what I would call that rather unique fuel cock from the KZ1000, from that customer with the, the threesome video, which will come out before this one. All right, I mentioned in that video, right now it's Friday, so it's gonna come out tonight at 5 p.m. I mentioned in that video about doing a giveaway video. And I'm gonna put this one out on Sunday, so, uh, the 10th, right? That's two days, yeah. And so you'll see that one Sunday afternoon, su Sunday evening, something around that time. And so I, I really wanted to save it because it was so unique. I've just never seen one before and it's a fairly early bike. So I wanted to keep it kind of early overall as much as possible. So this video is on how I saved that fuel cock. It works perfectly and I think you'll enjoy it and how it came out and a couple of little shenanigans I had to play in there to get the thing to work. So I think you'll like it, like I said. All right, now onto the giveaway. What I'm gonna give away is I'm gonna give two items to one viewer. I'm gonna give a t-shirt and I'm gonna give away one of these VM McKinney carb holders for the, uh, not the original Z1 McKinney's because that takes a clamp style. I'm not making those like pr production style. But one of these guys that has the two little holes like the VM26, VM28s, perhaps others, then that way you can screw it to the back of the carb rack. You've seen me use these a dozen times, if not more. Comes with the two screws that are threaded into it. It's not this one, this is the one I use. I have another one already made. I'm trying to sell them, nobody wants to buy them, so I'm just gonna go ahead and give it away. So like I said, one of these guys and a t-shirt. The t-shirt, which I don't have on obviously, is, you've seen it before, it's got a logo on the front and a big logo on the back, all right? So they're brand new, never been worn. Um, I, I think I just have that one left, so you're gonna get both of those things. How we're gonna work this giveaway is in the style of Maddie's workshop. You know, Maddie down, down, down under and his machine shop videos. And I saw this recently on a video, a video, I thought it was a great idea. What we're gonna do is, during this video that you're watching now, um, I'm gonna have a code. I'm gonna put a code in. I'm not gonna tell you if it's a number, an alphanumeric, or a word. It's gonna be one of those three. Or May, I don't know, could be gibberish, who knows? But of course, that's my normal language, so why not? And you have to watch for that code. It'll only show up for a few seconds and one time in the video. So when you see that code, make a note of it, write it down, uh, do whatever you need to do, and then turn around and comment on this video, but make sure that that code is in the comment. It doesn't have to be just the code. If you, if you want to, you can. You can say, your videos suck, and then put the code, that's fine. <laughs> so when you put that code in, I'll be able to use that code to go to the online sites, whatever, you know, the comment picker sites, and put that code in, and it'll be much easier to um, select a winner. Again, one winner, two items. So that's it on this. So enough jibber jabber on this intro. Um, let's go ahead and get on with the video. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching, as always. On the left here, we have a remanufactured or aftermarket. I keep saying remanufactured. It's more of a reproduction. Fuel cock for the KZ1000, KZ900, uh, early, the early ones. And you can say it's, you know, you can see it's pretty nice. And I've used them before. They are, are actually pretty good quality. And on the right here is the original one you saw from the video on the threesome between me and the CB and the KZ. And this is the original KZ fuel cock. And I brought up a question in regards to the 90 degree aspect of the, of the spigots coming off the back as opposed to the ones that come off parallel, which is what I'm used to seeing. Even on the A1 uh, KZ1000 from uh, 77 and so forth, Z1R, 
they were all like this with the two coming out the back. A dual exhaust, but this guy was kind of really a, um, a head scratcher, but I'm pretty sure I've nailed down that uh, this is an original one, and this is based on some information in the parts fishes only. It really looks like the original one, and I would I would really like to keep it um, original. It would be a super thing, super idea, I think. This one like that, or make that one like this, sort of, with using these parts. In other words, rob parts off of this one to fix this one, or make this one on the right here, this new one, look like this one with the 90 degree spigots. So I'm still debating what to do with this. And you can see that it's really pretty nasty. I mean, it's bad, but uh, I haven't taken anything apart. I did take the, uh, the little bowl off down here, which is the sediment bowl. And it's not too bad in there. Not too bad inside here at all. You would think it'd be worse, but it's not, luckily. It must have been in the off position. So it must have been off and everything was building up, up up in here, which is good. Nothing wrong with that. So what we're gonna have to do is see, you know, we may not be able to do anything. I might just have to use this one, but made in Taiwan, made in Japan. I would really like to keep this original guy going here. This, this, this would be something, I mean, it really appeals to me as far as keeping the originality, uh, you know, as far as the rest of the bike goes, who knows, but at least this part would be, so. Anyway, um, what I'm thinking about doing here is if I'm gonna follow the least destructive methodology so we can still use this if necessary. I don't wanna have to buy another one and eat it. I mean, I would, but uh, you know, because I'm, I'm all for the originality. If I had to sacrifice one of these at my own cost, I would do it, but I'm gonna try not to. So the least destructive on this would be to try to take this one apart completely and uh, see if we can get these parts out of the top. Uh, the pipe and stuff, I'm pretty sure we can pull out. And then take a look at it, see if we can do that on this one. Now the spigots on the back of this guy, I happen to just notice, uh, is, uh, or are rather, I think they're epoxied in. When they press them in, they epoxy them. You can see that around there. So if I was to make this one like the other one, what I'd end up having to do is I'd end up having to take it and uh, probably just machine off one of them and or machine it out I should say and then drill and, and machine uh, for a spigot in other words rob one off of here clean it up real good and then press it in here and use some 640 Loctite or something and uh, that'll be plugged off we'll just machine it out machine a brass plug uh, push it in make it look as close to this as we can you know see how that's recessed in there because it's not drilled all the way through and then drill and uh, ream this one to accept, you know, something like this. Assuming I have a reamer that size, I don't know. Uh, either that or, I don't know, make one of these. I'd hate to do that though, but, uh, cause this is, you know, these are perfectly fine. So that's what's going on inside my brain right now. And uh, my brain ain't working too well cause it's 7.16 in the morning. Normally I'm a morning person, but as I get older, it's a little more difficult to, to, to be that. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, let me think about this and we'll see if we can come up with a plan. I think the first thing we need to do is take this one apart, throw it in the ultrasonic and make sure it's actually salvageable. So I'm gonna try to get this stuff out. It's just a O-ring that's petrified in here. We can rob these, I'm pretty sure, from the other one. I do have one or two of these Petcock rebuild kits, or at least parts of them, laying around here. But I only got some parts. I don't have any of the stuff like this. I must have used them on other stuff. The way these are hooked up is there's a there's a slot inside. You'll see when I pull it out. Inside this valve there's a little slot and that screw's got a uh, machined end to it and that screw inside there um, goes inside that slot so it can't pull back and I think there's a spring in there, a little spring. Let's take it out. Yeah there's a little spring in there. Here's a little valve. It's got an o-ring. Obviously I have one of those because in that kit I got some smaller O-rings. There's a little spring and then there's a, um, the actual valve bot. This would be the valve, I guess, the valve arm and the little valve body thing that's got the little holes in is inside there. It's a tapered deal. It's kind of a cone. Not to be confused by cone heads. I need something bigger. That's what the wife said. Oh yeah, she's kind of stuck in there. We're gonna leave that for now because what I'm gonna end up doing is I got it warming up now is throwing this whole thing right into the ultrasonic 
and then seeing what we can get off of it. This will unscrew, see, this is supposed to unscrew right off of it like this one does. One of them is a left-hand thread. Well, that's the left-hand thread. That's why it won't screw off. And then the top one is a right-hand thread. Now that's all bound up. And that's so you can, when you put it on there, you turn it to the right and it draws the fuel cock up as it draws this uh, spigot off the tank in. So that's why it's got reverse threads on both sides. Put it in the ultrasonic for a while, see if we can get it to break apart. And I'm sure we will after it heats up. Figure out if we can do something with this. Cause I, like I said, I really would like to, to use this. Bottom of this where the little sediment bowl is, I don't like that, it's all chewed up. But we could steal this one and hopefully make them look close enough and put it on there. It's probably exactly the same thing. So, all right, let's, um, let's do that, see what we can come up with after we get this thing cleaned up and get the rest of the parts out of it. We are a little bit better. Well, quite a bit better. Got that out. This is that little cone thing I was telling you about. It's got the two holes in it, so, uh, what is it? The fuel, I don't know which one the fuel comes in. The fuel, okay, the fuel comes in these guys, goes out there. That depends on what position it's in. But look at this, like little plugs. <laughs> That's pretty nasty shit right there. Yeah, so we can clean this stuff out, but there's more inside here coming down through the tubes. So I'm gonna try to get these out. You know, again, the most destruction I want to employ at this point is on the part that I know I can't necessarily use right now, which is this one. So before I take this one and start go digging into it, then we wanna make sure this one's gonna be 100% as far as a good, good subject. If this is gonna work, we gotta get these out. So I'm just gonna heat it up gently to start with. Let's try our Mortski repair screwdriver. Oh, look at that. Mortski comes through every time. Tell you what. These are great, by the way. Morski repaired, you know, his um, YouTube channel and website. I've got two of these things. I mean, I'm telling you, these uh, these magnets on these things are, are pretty damn strong. So I use them for a lot of different stuff. This one's probably going to require more heat than this, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to overcomplicate this. I mean, when do I ever do that? We could just simply use the other one, but you know. I would really like to get this original one back in service. I've just never seen one like this before in this configuration. It'd be awfully cool to use. Now, whether we can get the parts off the other one without destroying it is another matter. It's coming, we just need a little bit more heat. Hey, look at that. Now, I don't propose to do the same thing on this one. I don't really know what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna try it. I may try it, I don't know, but uh, if I can get these out, it is made in Taiwan. That's made in Japan. So these might come out a hell of a lot easier, but I'm gonna take my calipers and measure this up first and make sure that they're both the same size once that uh, other one cools down a little bit. And uh, otherwise we're barking up the wrong tree here. I would need a different one for, for that one. Yeah, they're the same size. Yeah, 237, I'm sorry, 233, 234. This one is uh, 236, so. So that'll work. We can make that fit. So, um, so far so good. I mean, we may be able to pull this off. This one's pretty good. Got it pretty clean. I'd like to do more polishing on it. Uh, there's a little corrosion in the top here where those inlets go, but not anything terrible. And so, uh, okay, so I'm gonna set it aside. I'm gonna take this one apart here. I already got the screw out of the bottom of it. This is, I already looked at it really quick. This one's a little different as far as this goes, this little valve. Uh, there's a plastic piece inside there that locks in. You can see those two little ears. And instead of that plastic piece turning and bringing um, certain holes in alignment, uh, it has this area which does the same thing. So it's a little different, but very similar. And as far as the bottom goes, that's pretty much the same. Very similar to that at least. So I'm gonna take this stuff out. I'm not too sure if this screen will come out or not. Not too sure about that. You would think you could get that out to clean it sometime. 
I really need to get some new pick tools. Well, I'm gonna leave it for now. It's not gonna cause us any problem. I'm gonna try to get this inside part out now, just to set it aside. Yeah, it comes right out. Okay, so it goes the holes toward the top, obviously. That would have to go that way, since the inlets are right there. I'm gonna try heating this up a little bit and see if I can start breaking some of this stuff loose. It, there is some sort of adhesive here, so this kind of worries me a little bit. But I don't know about this one, but it depends on what they use. This is a risk. I know it's a risk, but I'd really just like to use this original one. If I get these parts, you know, new somewhere, which I've never been able to find, you can get rebuild kits for these things all day long, but as far as these parts, the standoffs and the little filters that are built into them, I've never been able to find those, so. All right, I heated this thing with the torch ultimately because it's a little more direction, directionable, directable. And I did get this out, but I did nick it with a little heat, so I think I have a solution I can put something over this with to make sure it's patent. Remember that we have a screen on the bottom as well, but I still don't like this, but. Well, we'll see, the damage is sort of already done, but um, you know, I might be able to save that. Worst things have happened. Now I'm gonna come up with a different way to hold this, to try to twist this one out as opposed to a pair of pliers. I uh, think I can get that one out. That one's gonna be a lot less, um, you know, risky because it's made out of brass. Well, all is not lost, you know? We can still pull this off. I could have just thrown this one on, but I just don't feel right about it, you know? Like I said before, I would eat another one gladly at my own expense to make this right. Piece of sandpaper on this gives me a pretty good grip. So I'm gonna start heating this right in this area, try to soften up whatever glue they used. I mean, it is made in China after all, so can't be that good. Could be just a Loctite too, you know, like a Loctite product. I don't know what they used. All right, I think we're on to something, folks. Just some light pliers. We just had to heat it up more. She's moving now. Whatever that glue is, it needed some more heat to come out. There we are, look at that. A little scratch, but no worse for the wear. I can polish that up. I'll put it over in a lathe and chuck it real lightly and then hit it with some, you know, 800 grit or so with some WD-40. We'll polish that right up and then some brass. So. But yeah, all right. So, so far with the exception of, that's not the one, with the exception of a little nick on this one, which by the way, the one that goes on the top of that are exactly the same. These two are exactly the same. So I might have something. Um, I got another fuel cock out in the uh, shed, a brand new one I just picked up from somebody that was selling it cheap. See what we got we can pull maybe apart from or something. But if this works, I'll eat my hat. I don't mean just that. I mean the whole idea. So there ain't gonna be any hat eating just yet. Sorry to disappoint you. Well, I missed it. I turned the camera off for a minute so the clip wouldn't be too long, but this is the ultimate objective here was to turn this down so this part falls off, so it did. Uh, yeah, unfortunately I missed it. But it is what it is. You see where I'm going here. Bunch of hair around this sucker, said the wife. Here we are. Does this count as a uh, midweek machining job? See? 
We'll push that in. It's already the right size as far as that barb goes for this hole, you know, where the, I don't know if it's called a barb, the larger area where the hose, where a hose would normally go on a fuel line. So uh, we'll shove that in, shove it, and that'll even be a better filter than this, this guy here. I mean, this is, this is crap. These are crap. So that'll work. Give me a little chamfer on each one of these guys. Just a little one. <sighs> Cleans up that edge a little bit so it's easier to shove shit in. It's always fun when you can shove shit in a little easier. All right, I'm going to, uh, this is what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm pretty sure this is gonna work because if I can replace the one I damaged with something better, which I believe this is gonna be, that, that goes in hard. So when I push this in, it's gonna stay. I'm gonna clean this tube up, polish it up over in the lathe, like I said, and uh, we're gonna get ready to push this in too, because this is pretty, I can feel it wants to go, but we'll, we're gonna put this one in with Loctite 640, like we normally do, probably just using the vise, just squeeze it in. And then um, this one, like I said, is just gonna get pushed in as it is, because it's, it's very tight. If it was a loose fit, I would just mix up a little JB Weld and uh, put it in there, but I don't think we're gonna need it. I mean, that is a really firm fit and it's starting to go. So I think we'll be okay with that. And then we get this put in, but I wanna polish this up, clean these guys up, and then um, I gotta do the, uh, where'd it go? Well, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this one or not. Let's see if this one's gonna thread in okay. The sediment bowl, I think that'll be fine. We'll use this one off of the new, new one. I'll polish this up on the wheel so it kinda looks more like that. And like I said, get these guys done. Let me go do that and final clean this, make sure there's no garbage in it whatsoever. And then we can reassemble it. And I'm 99.9% .9 certain now that this is gonna be usable and it'll be original and that's the cool part. Okay, mostly original. I'm gonna push the plastic one in first over here. I would use the metal vise on dad's old bench, but you guys are in it right now. So I'm using an eight mil socket on the main body of this thing. See if we can push it in without too much trouble. Good, that is in. See, this is what I'm talking about, Willis. That is not bad at all. So that's a good fit. We're not gonna get any fuel around that. It'll do just fine. It's about the same height too, because this of course is the reserve. The lower one is the reserve. So it's basically the same height because that would be down inside there about yay far. So it'll do the same thing. Um, it's just, it's gonna be better. That's gonna be way better. Now, do I have enough room for the, <laughs> I didn't check that. Do I have enough room for the tube next to it? That'd suck if I gotta make some modifications. Uh, <laughs> it sucks. Okay, stand by, I'll be right back. I ground a little flat on the grinder and finished it up with a needle deck file and uh, that'll fit just fine now. So yeah, uh, <laughs> this is in here. I said, maybe I'll just pull it back out. Nope, <laughs> that sucker's in there. I can't do this one on that bench. I'm gonna go over to the other a one off camera. I'm gonna go ahead and get this pressed in with some Loctite 640. Sys 40? Yeah, some Loctite 640. That's done. Loctite 640 is probably what they use. They probably used some sort of a Loctite on the original one. So, uh, you know, if I had to, ever had to take it apart again, I know how to get it apart, I would simply just heat it up again. Just scrap that part, because I can always make another one. And, uh, and then just uh, take this out. But you can only put so much pressure on it. It'd probably go deeper, but it got real tight real fast. So <laughs> that sounds familiar. So what, uh, what I just did was we're gonna rely on the pressure I already have and the Loctite to hold it in place. So let's go ahead and finish it out. I had to relieve the outside of this. It's too close to the threads. It wouldn't fit up in the bung without hitting it. So I had to give it some room for the clearance, Clarence. I'm um, using the original nut for some reason even though this nut from the aftermarket threads on, of course, the aftermarket, and this one from the original also threads on the aftermarket. 
And this aftermarket won't thread onto this. The threads are kind of buggered up in there or something. That's okay, we just polished it up and used that. Remember, it's a left-hand thread. And we'll get this uh, rubber washer in here. It'll pop over then. There's plenty of room down below that for that. So that's gonna be fine now. It's close. It's real close, but it fits. And I thought about taking and switching them, you know, and putting this guy, well, the proper one on it, but you get my drift on that. This guy that goes on the top here, I thought about moving it back down there and then moving this up here, but unfortunately, this is too big for inside there, even with machining it. So it is what it is. Let's get the guts back in on camera and we'll finish this up and test it. Yeah, they've been lying to us for years too. Fossil fuel is not just made from dinosaurs, but it's made from dinosaur poop, see? This is dinosaur poop. You can see how it spreads on this towel. Kind of looks like they're, well, never mind. But you see my point here, this dinosaur poop that I scraped out of some of these parts, that's where gas comes from. So don't let them fool you anymore. We're gonna obviously reuse this part, this brass part with the filter that goes up inside the peck cock because this one seems to be stuck or made into it on the aftermarket, but I figure I'd polish it up with some Brasso. And, you know, it's not like I'm trying to overcomplicate things, but when do I ever do that? I just want to make it nice and make it clean. So we'll go ahead and put it in. And then we got a rubber biscuit. This is new, came out of the other one, but I don't have any from the other kits. Like I said, I think I've or used them up otherwise. So we'll stick that guy in and we will use the sediment bowl thing from the new one because it does thread in nicely. This 10 mil um, hex on the bottom of it is a lot nicer too. So yeah, we'll use that. So that should work good for that. We got the top done. I just, we just need to put the front back in. Now I'm gonna have to use the original one and I haven't cleaned it yet. So I'm gonna go do that and then uh, we'll put a new O-ring on, which I do have in another kit. You saw those other kits I got? So we'll put a new O-ring in that and that little cone-shaped gizmo, which is in the ultrasonic right now. But the screw in, we can use the old one, it doesn't matter, it's in pretty good shape. Nobody's gonna see it, it's on the bottom. I'll polish it up a little bit. And then we're gonna test it. How we're gonna test it, we can only really do this one because you gotta make a seal and this is gonna be kind of hard to seal over it. And then we'll put some pressure on it and then uh, just keep it off. And then we'll block off the appropriate one, pressurize it again and make sure that it's holding pressure. If it does, then we're good. So this guy goes in first. Now we get this guy in. I'm gonna put a little silicone grease. I'm not gonna forget the spring, I promise. A little silicone grease on it. We'll put the spring in and in like that. You see, so the spring goes in like that. And we're gonna bring this guy together like this and um, hopefully it'll work. I always put these in backwards, but we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out here in a second. Let's put the screw back in the bottom here and that goes into that little slot, as I said. Okay, so now we're on, should be, <laughs> nope, try that. Okay, it's off, good, on. I always put them in backwards. Yeah, that's on, it's flowing. And it feels real good, feels nice. It feels like it normally would feel. Not too loose, not too tight. Never mind. And so now we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the actual pressure tester out. We're gonna put it on here, just block off. You can only do the one, but um, unfortunately, cause I can't put pressure on this, uh, uh, this uh, reserve one, you know, because of the way it is. But uh, we'll do that, then we'll put the, the one candle on top of the cake here, which is that filter that goes there. But before I do that again, I want to at least test the on side. That'll give me a good idea to, that, that everything is working properly in it. I got a hose adapted to it, which means it's too small and I jammed it in, so hopefully it'll work. We're in the off position right now. We should be able to pump this up. Pump you up and it shouldn't leak past. Should be off is off, no fuel leakage past it. There we go. So, we, you know, again, this cuff kind of stretches a little bit. So you got to kind of let the, uh, the thing settle where it wants to settle. Because it'll kind of go like open up a little bit since it's, you know, Velcro and rubber. So there are a lot of uses for Velcro and rubber. Let me tell you about, oh, never mind. But you can see right here, we've got a really good pressure hold at four PSI. No problemo. So let's go ahead and open it to the on position. And then we have to 
count both of these off because when it's either on or reserved, the thing is, is obviously fueling both, uh, both ports, both spigots. I might be bypassing past my fingers, but I'm not 100% sure if I like that. Again, eh, a little droppage there. Let's, let's try to find out where that's coming from. I went over to my vacuum cap uh, stash and got two caps that are very tight on there, but uh, they should work better. Now I got another hand free here. That could have just been bleeding past my fingers holding it in place. I don't see it leaking anywhere, but it's, well, it's holding at three. Not sure. Turn it to the off position, pump it back up. That yeah, holds fine. It should be exactly the same thing in the on position or a reserve if we were able to test that. Now it could be coming right back out the reserve here. Um, I'm not really sure. I don't want to put any solvent on there because I got Loctite in there right now, but that, it doesn't, that wouldn't matter. What I'm most concerned about is whether or not it would be leaking out here because we don't want it to bypass. I mean, if you got fluid pushing from both sides of this, it's the path of least resistance is going to take over. So it's always going to go to the one that it's set for. So I don't see any leaking at this end, at the discharge end here. Let's check down here for the heck of it though. Oh, you know what, it could be this. You know, you know, this guy's an idiot. This idiot, this guy, that would be me, forgot to tighten this uh, sediment bowl. So, doy, of course it's gonna be leaking. This guy is an idiot. I don't know why anybody's watching this video anymore. I'm like, where's it leaking from? Well, doy. We're in the off position, let's turn it back on. Now let's try it. Gee whiz. Yeah, we're dead solid now. I don't know why anybody watches any of my videos at this point. I just keep doing dumb things. So yeah, th that was it. I just forgot to tighten that. Yeah, because that's part of the system that gets pressurized. So it's definitely holding good enough. Final task is to put that candle on the cake. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Um, I'm real happy with that because it's, it's original now. I mean, it really is original, close, close to original. I mean, you're not gonna see this part of it sticking up in the tank, obviously, unless you decide to miniaturize yourself and go for a swim. But, uh, you know, in this case, it'll be fine. So yeah, um, this is really cool. Okay, so that pretty much does it for the Petcock repair video. As you can see, it is in service. It works great, and I'm real happy with the way that came out. Let me update you on the 5,000 subscriber giveaway little change here. Stuff changes around here pretty quick, so that's the way it works. I found a second t-shirt, so we're going to give away two t-shirts and that VM carb rack. So I'm going to make two picks, and I'll explain how I'm going to do the picks here in a minute. So the first pick is going to get the two items. The first pick I make is going to be the VM carb rack and a t-shirt. The second pick is going to be just a t-shirt. I'm going to do it the way Maddie did it the last time he did a giveaway, and I'm going to actually film myself doing the picks and then it'll be at the beginning of the next video. The next video is on this lift. I've already got it shot and I'm in editing right now. Repairing the, the air cylinder, I was gonna say hydraulic. It's kinda like a, looks like a hydraulic cylinder, but it's a pneumatic cylinder. Repairing the pneumatic cylinder on this uh, lift here that the bike is sitting on right now, my big lift. And it was not fun, hashtag. In fact, it wasn't, it was so not fun, I had to do it two times because I loved it so much. But you know, hey, we get it right because we do it twice. So yeah, that's how we're gonna do the drawing as far as the winners um, for the uh, items, you know, for 5,000 subscriber appreciation. Speaking of which, I do appreciate you all very, very much. I said that before and I really mean it. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. And again, I do it for you guys. So yeah, anyway, let's close this out. But one final thing, I did do the stator on this between yesterday and today and normally it doesn't take two days to do a stator, but this one was particularly problematic. Not the stator so much, but let me show you what I mean. Well, first of all, sorry about the light here. First of all, this uh, bolt here, somebody jammed a quarter 20 cap bolt in there for some reason, and the threads were savable, so I just ran a tap in there and chased them, and it was fine. So I replaced all these bolts because they were the screws they had in there were the old style, like these uh, JIS ones. They were completely terrible. In fact, I thought one was seized. I had to use it. Uh, I had to use a pair of vice grips to get it out because there was no head left to it. It had all rotted away. That wasn't a big deal. Got the stator in, got the wires run. Of course, I had to take the sprocket cover off. That's where the problem was. So I didn't notice it when I took off, took it off, but this left lower bolt, the threads were gone and stripped out. 
In fact, it had two other problems. The, these two bolts down here are the alignment pin bolts, the alignment pin holes rather, to align this cover. That uh, pin was broke off, right flush with the outside of the boss where this thing mounts up way inside here. And it was all chewed up like somebody had been pounding at it. And so I looked at that and said, what the hell am I going to do to fix that? Or how am I going to fix that? I ultimately did. The rest of them were okay. Here's the pin that came out. The rest of it, I should say. The, the, the last part of the pin. So I did get that out. Um, what I ended up doing was I made a couple of tools out of some of Dad's old junk laying around. These are like punches that have uh, the the actual punch itself captured inside of it. One was spring-loaded, one wasn't. So I took this one, and because the tip is hardened, but the body of this is not, so it was easy to turn. And I turned it down so it would fit inside the hole um, that that uh, pin normally sat in once I got it out, because the hole where the pin goes in was fine. Luckily, that didn't get chewed up. So what I did was I used this, obviously, once it was lined up to uh, get way down deep inside there and get a nice little punch mark at this focus. A nice punch mark right at the center of whatever that left of that was left of that bolt in there because it was a broken off bolt as I said way deep down inside the hole then I made this one out of another one the tip on this is hardened see it's bigger in the back but it tapers down to about this length uh, with a smaller amount which is hardened so I turned it down to just get a manageable length and tappy tap tapped it in and used a drill bit of an appropriate size which was snug in here and then drilled into that bolt and I got it out. I couldn't believe it, but I got the remnants of that bolt out. Once I did that, I was able to tap or drill it rather with the appropriate uh, drill size for an M6 helicoil. Got it nice and straight and then put an M6 helicoil in. So that was that repair was successful. By far the most uh, highest degree of difficulty repair on a thread that I have ever made was this guy right here. It was, you know, of course, remember, that is way back inside there. That bolts up to the engine case, not to the transmission cover. Way back inside there. This one would have been worse because the frame is right there. In fact, I may not even even been able to repair that with the engine in situ, but this one I was able to get at, we were able to repair it. So, yeah, um, we got that done, but I just wanted to kind of show you that because this is going to be gone here shortly. It's pretty much done now. So this bike's going to be gone. So I kind of wanted to let you know what happened with that. But yeah, I got it done. So that's it. You know what? Dad's old stuff sure comes in handy still to this day. Thanks a lot, Dad. So I use a lot of his stuff. Dad's old bench. Can't do wrong with that kind of stuff. All right. Don't forget your roots. So look for the beginning of the next video where we pick the winners. Again, I'll film myself doing that. And feel myself? No. Film myself doing that. What I'll do is I'll put it up at the beginning of that video. I will comment in this video, though, to the people who won. And then you'll see your names um, on that next video, which, again, is on the pneumatic cylinder repair. Hashtag not fun on this lift. So I had a lot of fun. This thing works great, and I'm happy with that. If you're happy with the video, you know what you need to do. You subscribe, ring the bell, like, share. Do all that normal stuff that really helps me out a lot. You notify when I put more crap like this up. Till next time, as always, don't just repair, restore. Thanks for watching. Catch you on that next video.